just pick a chair, any chair. <laughs> Jim Perrick, everybody. His lovely wife, Sierra. So I'd like to get these started off, uh, Jim asking filmmakers to talk about what, what inspired them to make this film. Why did, they want, why did you want to tell this story? Uh... Oh. <laughs> we didn't have the mics. Oh. There should be mics next to You should be okay. There should be some mics back there. Uh, before we do that, Tony, let me just, uh, real quick, if you worked on this movie, like a lot of you did, just stand up real quick so we can recognize you. Because uh, so many people... <laughs> So before, just uh, Alex O'Flynn, my editor, just really uh, pulled the whole movie out of what was a pretty wild bunch of uh, footage. And uh, I'm grateful for you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, the, reason, the reason that we made this movie when we did was that I did a... Uh, kind of a big budget movie and uh, made some good friends, a couple of them here tonight. Uh, but when we, when we were making it, uh, it was very clear that no one had any regard for much anything at all except for money. And that's fine, and that's fine to do business that way, but I, I got disturbed by the fact that people were doing creative business that way and they were sort of promising people that they could be creative people and expressive people and instead they were just sort of leading them into a situation that way and then only really thinking about money and uh, it was a marine it was a movie where we had a chance to i feel like tell a good story and everything and, and they swapped all that out for just being common and silly and ridiculous and everything else and and i called sierra one night after i saw the movie brothers which uh, was a cool movie but but i just saw Actors getting to do what they what they showed up to do, getting to do the parts that they had taken on, and and getting to do it, and seeming supported in it. And I called her bawling, saying that I felt completely uh, lost, and that I felt like I had died. I felt like something in me had died, and that uh, my integrity was gone, and I felt horrible. And I said, I don't know what to do about it. And she said, You know, it'll be okay. And then one day, I, on the set of that movie, I stole a little red bike and was was cruising around and I had on this military gear and uh, I felt so damn good for the first time in a long time. Uh, felt like a kid. And so I came up with the idea of the last shot of the movie um, and called Sierra and my family and said, let's, let's, I got an idea for a movie and, and we started it just sort of as a short. And then uh, we liked what we did and so we worked backwards and came up with, with the story of how she ended up in Texas. But I'd seen that movie, The 400 Blows, when I was like seven, 17 years old. And uh, the last shot of the movie is that terrific shot of the kid running when he escapes the, what is it, the work farm for young French kids or something, but, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why it felt so good, but I remember sitting there at 17 watching it saying, I feel that way, just going and going and going, and I always liked that shot of, a lot. And they didn't want to replicate it, but I thought that, uh, I kind of came up with the last shot of the movie first. I think it's the only shot that I came up with for the rest of the movie. <laughs> so we went to Texas and got my family together and uh, decided to make a movie. I'm going to take some, some questions from the audience, or I, as I can monopolize this, or, or do you want to say anything more about, uh, about the making of the movie? And Because uh, I think it's interesting the way you made the movie, the way you got the actors together, Say something about that, and then I'm sure they'll ask all the right questions. But 
basically just started with some real guidelines that were the antithesis of what I was seeing on the set of that movie, where they hated uh, the audience so badly. And, and they kind of have to because they've spent so much money that, you, that we all scare them. You know, if, if, if we don't show up, they lose a lot of money. I'd, you know, I'd hate people like that too. But, but they, you know, so I said the first thing was, uh, and I directed a play and this is just the way it went and it worked out well. Everybody gets treated the same. Everybody. Everybody. That there's this idea of for being extras or whatever, and I, I, and I told some of the people, well, that, that's such a nonsense thing. There's not a good director will tell you he doesn't put anything more into the shot or into a scene that needs to be there. They're not extra people. That's, I think that's a kind of term that people use to bolster themselves or make themselves feel better. So we said everybody gets treated the same. Everybody's going to be allowed to express themselves. And we're doing it together. And that was kind of rule number one. And rule number two was, uh, I would never, ever, ever talk to the actors about what they felt, ever, because what do I know? Um, I would help them into the situation, and then whatever they felt, because they got in touch with that, would come up freely, and they didn't feel the pressure that an actor feels when you say, this is the sad scene, go, <laughs> right? Uh, and the... I think that's why there's such a kind of variety of surprising uh, emotion that comes up and a big spectrum of feeling that comes up. Because there wasn't some knucklehead saying, this is the angry scene and then the happy and then go. You know, it, but to really, I made a real rule with myself, I will never talk to them about feeling, only about meaning. And uh, beyond that, we have a good time. <laughs> and I think those are the three rules, yeah. Questions from the audience. How much of it was scripted? Was there any script at all? Yeah. Just, I mean, it was all scripted. It was so real. And it wasn't all written down in terms of dialogue, but it was all scripted. Awesome. Yeah, there was one scene that I wrote. Well, some of the speeches in the grief counseling scene, some of them were written and given to the actors, and some of them were real. Um, you know, Scott's actually isn't real because here I stand. But some of them were made up. And then the other scene was the scene between Tony and Sierra, which I gotta tell you, uh, they worked so hard on. And their work helped me kind of rewrite it and, and, and work on some things. But those, those were the only pieces of the movie where maybe I put down the words to say and handed them over. Uh, the rest of it we came up with and we had set certain things. The right things were always set because they were so familiar with the situations. But yeah. That's a great question, Catherine. How long did you wait to get the call to finish it? Uh, we started Jan uh, forgive me, December 24th, 2009. And we finished, uh, I think, last Monday. Somebody better at math than me figure that out. <laughs> 